In the last video, we focused on a snooping-based protocol, and in this video, I'll, I'll look at um, a directory-based protocol in more detail. Right. So those are the two main axes along which uh, these protocols are, are split. You can also implement protocols with either a write invalidate or write update policy. And I'd, I'd mentioned last time that an invalidate-based policy is much more bandwidth efficient, which is why I'll now focus on a protocol that implements a write invalidate policy and a directory-based approach. Okay, so firstly, you know, why are we doing this? So when we discuss the snooping-based protocol, we saw that you know all transactions are performed on a broadcast-based shared bus. Okay, so everyone is seeing what everybody else is doing, and everyone is self-managing their own cache states. And this protocol does not scale very well because you know if you have many nodes sharing the same bus, that bus will quickly get saturated. Okay, so if you're using any more than say 16 nodes using a broadcast based bus is not going to work very well okay so for larger systems you will need a protocol which is directory based okay so let me explain you know what our basic uh, architecture is and this is a figure that that we have seen before so you know, let me jump straight to that and so there are you know two main steps being taken to improve the scalability so one i'm not using a bus okay so instead i'm using a scalable network over here and you know this my network could perhaps represent a mesh okay so i have you know several nodes and they're all being laid out in a two-dimensional array and I have these connections between my north, south, east, west neighbors. Okay, so when I'm sending a message from A to B, that message is not seen by everyone. It is only seen by uh, the intermediate routers between nodes A and B. Okay, so not everyone is aware of all the transactions happening in the system. Okay, so this is the number one thing that we have done to improve scalability, right? So, you know, by having a scalable network like this, you can have many different messages that are in transit at the same time, but they're all going between different sets of nodes. The second big change is in our earlier design, we had the the centralized shared memory that everyone was trying to access. Okay, now instead, what I've done is I have broken up that 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 large piece of memory into many smaller pieces, and I've scattered them all over the system. Okay, so uh, you know I have perhaps one gigabyte worth of memory sitting here. Uh, and then the second gigabyte of memory is sitting over here, so it has addresses, you know, one to two gigabytes. This one has addresses, you know, two to three gigabytes, and so on. Okay, so every every node over here is responsible for handling about one gigabyte of memory. Okay, so there's no centralized memory resource. Based on the address that you're trying to access, you will send the request to the appropriate node. Okay, so now let's go through an example of of a protocol. Let's assume that we are dealing with block X which let's say happens to have an address of 1.5 gigs okay so it is sitting somewhere over here in node 2 okay and what I'm also going to do now is you know corresponding to every piece of data there's also going to be a directory associated with it okay so there's only one unique copy of X in main memory corresponding to that copy of X there's going to be a directory and this directory is responsible for keeping track of whether this block has any cached copies okay so you know since not everyone is seeing everything if there are cached copies and they have to be invalidated it is a responsibility of the directory to do that right and so the directory has to keep track of where all these cached copies exist so initially you are keeping track of the fact that the block is shared which means the memory copy is clean and correct and this is this block is currently not shared so there's an empty set of sharers okay now let's assume that processor, you know, there's processor P1, P2, P3, P4. P1 first tries to do a read of X. It looks at its caches. It does not find the block. And so it says that, well, X is address 1.5 gigs. So I know this is placed in node number 2. So I'm going to send my request over this network to node 2. Okay, and this is a point-to-point -point message. You know, no one else has seen that processor P1 has a miss on X. So when the request shows up, you read the value of X from memory. At the same time, you also read its directory information. Okay, so it's possible that both are implemented uh, with DRAM technology. And so you get both the pieces of data at the same time. You examine the directory and it says that this is this block is in shared state, which means the memory copy is clean. So I can send this copy back to the requester. So there was a read of X that showed up and the block X is returned over here. Block X is placed in process P1's cache. And it is in shared state, indicating that, you know, since you were just trying to do a read, here's the block in shared state. You have permissions to read this block. Okay, and the directory is now updated to say that the block is in shared state with node number 1. 
Okay, so now your transaction is over. Next, let's say that you know processor P4 also tries to do a read of X. Again, it looks up its cache, has a miss. So the request is sent to the node that has the data, which is node 2. Again, you read out the memory, you read out the directory, and you realize that the block is in shared state. So this copy of X is clean and it gets sent back. And you keep X over here in shared state. And then you have to update the directory to say that this block is shared in both nodes 1 and 4. Okay. Then, you know, node 3 comes along and it tries to do a write to X. Okay, so again, it has a miss in cache, sends the request over here on the network saying I'm trying to do a write of X. You read things out of the directory and then you realize that, okay, you know, now this, in this case, processor P3 is trying to do a write. When you're doing a write, you always try to get the block in exclusive state. So you should have the only cache copy and that then allows you to freely perform your reads and writes. Okay, so, you know, at the end of this transaction, processor P3 needs to have the only cache copy of X. Okay, but, the, but, but your directory now realizes that, you know, while memory does have a clean copy of X, this is not, you know, that there are other cache copies as well. And those cache copies have to be invalidated first. Okay, because I don't want other, ca other cache copies to exist while someone thinks it has an exclusive copy and is busy doing writes on them. Okay, so the first thing I have to do is I have to invalidate P1 and P4. Okay, and P1 and P4 are, are right now oblivious of the fact that P3 is trying to do a write, okay, because we've moved away from our broadcast-based bus. Okay, so it is the responsibility of the directory to let P1 and P4 know that there is a write being performed and their cache copies have to be invalidated. So there's a point-to-point -point message sent over here saying you need to invalidate X and a message sent over here saying you need to invalidate X. Okay, and so these copies will go into invalid state and you know P1 has to then send back an acknowledgement saying that it has invalidated X and likewise P4 also has to send an acknowledgement saying that it has invalidated X okay and the reason for this acknowledgement will be made more clear when we later talk about consistency models okay but you know intuitively let me give you a sense for why this acknowledgement is sent okay so previously we were having this broadcast based bus where if you placed a request on the bus you were guaranteed that everyone would see that broadcast within the next one cycle. In this case, you are sending these point-to-point -point messages, right? So it is really not clear how long it takes a message to reach its destination, right? I mean, it's not just a matter of the number of hops. You could also have congestion and load on the networks and you could be stalled in some router for a really long time, okay? So when the directory sends out an invalidation, it's not clear when the invalidation actually happens, okay? so. Uh, the directory can't give permissions to P3 to proceed unless it is perfectly sure that these invalidations have happened. Okay, so you have to receive an acknowledgement saying that the invalidations have indeed been completed and now P3 can proceed with its write. Okay, so as I said, we'll, we'll talk about this more uh, when we get to consistency models. Okay, so having received both the acts, node 2 now sends uh, the block and permissions to P3. So X gets placed over here and it's now in modified state and the directory has to also be updated to say that this is now in modified state with node 3. Okay, so in the next video I'll go through a few more examples and I'll also clear out this figure because it's, it's become such a mess.